We already know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. And it's this knowledge that I'm going to use to prove that the interior angles, the inside angles of any triangle, also add up to 180 degrees. So, if I take my three angles, remove my triangle, I have my straight line, placing these carefully on that line, all three of them, should make a nice neat fit, and showing that they add up to 180 degrees. I'm going to use this demonstration to prove that opposite angles are indeed equal. If we take two lines which cross at any point, any position, the opposite angles will equal each other. This angle equals this one, as is this one with this one. Now to prove this, I'm going to take my initial angle, which fits in there. So hopefully this angle will be the same, which it is. And to prove that that's not a fluke, if I take a second position, say, there, then this angle is equal to this one, thus proving that opposite angles are indeed equal. This demonstration, I'd like to talk about both corresponding angles and alternate angles, but what on earth are they? Well, if we take a set of parallel lines, which are intersected by a third straight line, we create two sets of angles, four here and four here, and they have interrelationships between them. We've already seen from the previous example that vertically opposite angles are equal. This angle will equal this one, but also corresponding angles will be the same. So this angle corresponds to this angle here, which is the same, and also alternate angles will be the same, in that this angle is alternate to this one. So in actual fact, the end result is that all four of these angles will be the same as is one, two, three, four angles here will be the same. Hope that helps. So how can we apply this theory to a real example? Well, if we take our two parallel lines again, which are intersected by another two lines, we end up with a central triangle with other angles in and around there. From given information, this, say, is 53 degrees, this is 45 degrees. We need to calculate angle A and also angle B. Now, we're not allowed to measure. This is a calculation. It's often worth breaking this down into smaller parts. Breaking it down into smaller parts, we have this part of the diagram, which has angles on a straight line. And we know that all of those angles should total 180 degrees. We already have 53 and the 45, which gives us a total of 98. Now, I need a total of 180, so I'm going to use the counting on method. I'm going to jump 2 to 100, and then jump another 80 to get me to 180. That gives me a total of 82. So this angle here, I know, is 82 degrees calculation. It's often worth breaking this down into smaller parts. This part of the diagram contains two corresponding angles. B corresponds to 53 degrees. They are both equal. So I can put that on my diagram. B is equal to 53 degrees parts. Here we have a pair of opposite angles and already from our theory we know that opposite angles are also equal. It's often worth breaking this down into smaller parts. This part of the diagram contains alternate angles. A is alternate to 45 degrees. So indeed, we can label that as 45 degrees. Our final diagram now looks like this, with all of our angles in place. We can confirm our findings using the theory of the interior angles of a triangle, adding up to 180 degrees. That's 82, 53 and 45 do indeed add up. 180 degrees. Hope that helps.